Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world, today the Dove Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1974 International 100 running for the first time in 16 years. That's right, we got the thing in the backyard. It's super windy. Let's go back in time to when Chin pulled in the yard with this sweet treat. Alrighty, got the International loaded up. The old Ironhead Mike and Hoot Dan. Hope they get it on there. See if the uh, old GMC can haul it. Let's see what the old chin brought us today. Looks like a slab sided international. Oh, no tick. You gotta put new engines in at 80,000 miles to keep that. Yeah, the old uh, Carolina lean going on here. It goes good with those fancy flannels you wear in those uh, skateboarding shoes. Duff is already highly interested. What's going on there? Look at this fancy push bumper. Last tagged three of 06, so 16 years. It's got the, the tow package. Somebody didn't plan out the uh, tow hitch, so they had to put a little niche on the uh, angle iron and really notch her out on that side. Oh, we, we may have uh, covered up the uh, blinkers with the, with the fancy push bumper, but don't worry. Fixed it with a couple of Petersons. It's just tied together too on this side. Oh yeah, just... Just a little twisty twist. Don't even taper up or nothing. But look at the, I thought you were gonna make fun of the brackets. No, they are, they are tied in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> half inch plate. Never mind that it's held on by just one half inch bolt, but uh, they really tried hard with the bracket itself. Oh yeah. Why do they make the uh, steering bar stick out so far and so low? That's silly. Duff's still looking. She's been to the uh, the Foss shop before. Little. It's got a wide body kit. <laughs> That's what that is. Oh, we need some tow mirrors. There's one in there. Oh, we're good to go then. Cab corner is a little squishy. The floors in these things are usually just gone because they're so flat. There's no like low spot. Is that a factory seat? That thing is plush. Oh yeah, that is factory. Oh, this thing is good. How many miles? We'll never know because it's too foggy. Unless we take that plate off. She's got a SW oil pressure gauge, so apparently that gauge wasn't working. Here, let's uh, slide that over to where it needs to be. Four speed, four wheel drive, padded dash, AM radio, heater. Oh, this thing's loaded headliner. I literally know nothing about internationals. Duff knows that it smells good. A little hooey in the door. We'll, uh, we'll plunge your dent that right out. Oh, stress crack go, oh my, oh my. Yeah, were were you just watching that on the whole ride home? Just flopped the whole way. The other one's got a nice bracket that comes off. The other one's nice and solid. So we'll have to re refabric cobble the, oh my gosh, these box sides are held on with hopes and dreams. Overload springs, you ain't dropping until your bump's stopping and they're long gone. Look at that transmission hoop, driveline hoop, thinger hoop, hula hoop. A lot of whiskey dents, but we can take that box side off easy and patch that up. I'm guessing the tailgate no longer opens because uh, the handle is, seems to be MIA. It didn't open on the way. Square plate bumper. Usually it says where they were made, but it's too dinged up to see that. Right, Duff? He's like, I'll sniff it out. Looks like it was made in Arkansas, he says. Steel floor? Oh my gosh, this tailgate. She's uh, she, she's molded it. in pretty good. I can't open it. The access plate must oh. be on one side that's still latched on. Why, you don't think this side is latched? No, I can, I can physically <laughs> see that it is not latched. The whole box side moves with it. It's good, it's good. I think these were one of the first pickups with the uh, double sidewall. I don't know, maybe I'm just making that up too, but the insides of the box are pretty crude. Oh, she's been, 
patched up. That's they did a good job of that bracing that side up. This side they never got to. Tail lights are in it. It's got the open country Toyo radials. Those are five on five and a half. One out of four ain't bad. This side is not much better. It does have the bracket in place. Oh, it's adjustable even, Duff. Look at how they overlap. What a deal. At least we got a pattern. I think they over... No, no, they're just welded. They're not adjustable. Look at that gap between the box and the frame. Holy buckets, Batman. That's like a 10-inch body lift up there. She really kicks up in the back. I think this is an 1100. No, a 100. She's a 100. She's got the eight cylinder in it. We don't know if it's a 304, 345, 392. It's got international hubs. Let's uh, set those to freedom. Yep, already in freedom mode. What do you think, Duff? Is it 345? Yeah, I think so too. A four by four or four by two. Oh yeah, look at that. Four by four and four by two. Cause if lock and free wasn't explanatory enough. Some of them have fuel caps up here. A real terrible spot. This one's got it back here. And she smells a little, a little varnishy. Six was not a good year for fuel. Apparently. I don't want it, take it back. Got her right up to the winch. Hopefully it didn't hit any bumps and tear the fair lead off. Hoods, must be some stuff where things sit and uh, rot it out. Somebody stole our inner smashing badge, son of a biscuit. You know, if it weren't for the box, it'd be pretty straight. I the bottom side's not even too bad. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just put it upside down, it'll be great. All right, let's get this thing unloaded. All right, that was a couple weeks ago. We got it in the yard. Looks like that tire might take air. His father-in-law said that they were new when they parked it. So let's take this guy and uh, see if we can't put a little of this wind in it. Somebody still needs to own that stinking Nomad. Yes, it is a Nomad. Well, I'm uh, pumping this thing up. m and stands for uh, mud and snow, in case you didn't know. I'm a poet, didn't even know it. What's the date code on these sons of guns? Uh, looks like seven of 01, seventh week of 01. So these tires were five years old when they parked it. And yes, I know they could have been driving this thing well after it was tagged, but that's the best thing we got to go by. Let's crank this up to, uh, let's see if she'll go up to 20. And then set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. Little well, son of a biscuit, the uh, Toyo Open Countries took air. What a deal. I don't know why Chin didn't put that in there before he tried uh, rolling around the trailer. Maybe if he'd have done it on these, we wouldn't be in this debacle. But I think that thing's hosed. And the one on this side is just as bad. So we're going to have to scrounge up some tires for them, huh, Doc? Yeah, story of our life. Any critters under there? What do you think of that blue? I kind of like it. It's too bad the uh, paint on the back didn't hold up. Oh man, that's a good hooey right there. Somebody previously hooied that. All right, let's get her in the shop. Well, let's get this thing scooped up. Get those front wheels off. See if we can't round up some 15 inch tires that they're on there so that when we get it running, we can drive it. Because Chin's in-laws said it ran when it was parked. We haven't heard that before. And it should be real easy to get it running. Real easy. So easy, why didn't they get it running? Oh man, that was a good car. That was a good trip, Duff. You wouldn't know, because you weren't invited. Next time, we should uh, wash the bugs off and go for a rip tonight. How about that? So these are right-hand thread. You can tell, because the way that it is, this is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. And also because when I was fitting up my socket back here, I got the R on them, right hand thread. And you can tell that they're lug centric because of the way that they are and they're not hub centric because this circle inside of the uh, wheel does not match up with the uh, hub on the uh, rear brakes. Axle, I guess. So there's that. Sixth week of 01. 
or maybe it's the first week of 06. Then it wouldn't be so bad, but I think uh, the other side is 07 of 01. Right? I don't know. My memory. My memory is really good. It's just short. What do we got here? 235, 75 R15. Pretty common farm pickup tire. 7 of 01. So I doubt one was the first week of 07 and uh, first week of 06. So seventh week of 01 and sixth week of 01. So these are really good 20. One year old tires, real good. Use that term loosely. Let's get this thing off and that one off and get them on the uh, tire machine. What was this thing? What do you identify as other than shot? It's the Mega IV. What's that? Nine? Mid the Mega Nine? I don't know. IV. Oof. Roman numerals. What a silly thing. Duff, you know Roman numerals? I Me mean, either. It's a Hercules. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Superior. White lines out, old man things. Gotta have that big center hole to clear that hub. Disc brakes even? What a deal. International was uptown. I think everybody went to disc brakes that time. I don't know about Mopar, but GM and Ford did. Little crawl goes a long way as kids. And these are left hand thread. You can tell also because the way that it is and that there's an L in the middle of the stud because International was special. Oh, maybe they're not. I was wrong. Unless I just picked the only one that's uh, right hand thread. Huh. Maybe International I had to figure it out by the 70s. Good deal. Ouch! Yeah, that tire's not gonna take care of it. by the cords that went through my hand. Ooh, this is a golden mark on this side. And she's a 255-70-15, so they didn't even match these things up. I don't know that I've ever seen a 255-70. I've seen a 235-70, so she's a big wide dog. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to go dig through the stash and find a couple of 15 inch tires to throw on there. On this side, we got a 205, 75, 15. It's a Commodore. I don't know, it's, it sounds like some, I don't know, hierarchy? Long live the queen. Yeah, it's gotta be quite a bit newer. Where's our date code on this thing? Sure enough, eight of 11. So that's only an 11 year old tire. Well, let's go do the other side. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know what it stands for, but instead of a P205 as passenger, ST is trailer. These are some trailer tires I had laying around. I don't know what the ST stands for. I'm sure everybody's gonna comment down below though. Look at this one. She's a trailer king. Kind of like that self-proclaimed Oki down there. Calls himself the Datsun King. Even though I think he's only got one that runs. Well, maybe he's got a couple. I don't know with you. This is from the 26th week of 18. So that's only four years old. This is a pretty good tire. Almost too good to give up on this hot rod. Even says, for trailer service only. Pretty sure this one will say ST205. Yeah, ST radio right there. Service trailer, special trailer. Super trailer. Well, it's good to know that they all roll, so we don't have any brakes that we gotta knock loose. Well, since we got her up on the hoist, let's lift her up. See what we can find underneath it all. Let's check this thing out from the uh, back moving forward. Oh yeah, that's a pretty beefy bracket for the bumper. Even got a couple of kickers going up to the uh, cross bumper that have been torn out from all the uh, yanking Fords out of the ditch. Settle down Ford guys. You get so angry when we poke a little bit of fun. 
Cripes. Yeah. Uh, Ray Charles clearly welded that with his feet right there. You got the right one, baby. Wowza. A lot of penetration. If you can't weld good, weld a lot. Ooh, the electrical guillotine, the good old scotch clip right there. You yeah, can't go wrong with that. Actually, you always almost go wrong with that. It's got the overload leaves, and uh, it looks like they've been touching once or twice, so she's hauled some uh, girthy loads, if you know what I mean. It's got this little tiny rear axle. I, I think it's a Dana. I'm not even gonna say a number. Uh, it's, a, it's a Dana. I wonder if these were added on. You'd think they would just have a block in there instead of a whole bunch of chunks of leaf spring. Who knows? Both shocks look like they're leaking, so they're probably original and shot. Drive shaft, pinion, not all schlopped out. So that's good. It does have a grease circ on it, so I assume it's probably been replaced. Nah, these old ones probably didn't. Uh, probably did have grease circs on me. I didn't know they used split loom way back then. Unless somebody added that, but that looks factory OG. Ooh. Wow, when you lift her up in the air, that rear brake hose gets real taut. Probably because this tab is bent and should be bent at a 90 instead of bent at 180 degrees flat against itself. And that leads me to believe that whatever bent that, Probably peeled up this whole lip of the frame rail, so I think somebody crawled over a rock pile at one point. It's uh, single exhaust, but it's straight pipe. It's the good heavy stuff. We're missing the muffler and all of the tailpipe, so that's that's good. I think on these Danas, I could be wrong, but I think somewhere like right in here in these in the crotch, I think there's a whatever model it is, a stamped, or is that just on the Dana 60s four-wheel drive folks? I don't know. Why, why couldn't they just make like bolts that you could count how many there were? Like a 10 or a 12. Just what you wanted. Education's on rear ends. I don't see any numbers. So, yep, it's a, it's a Dana 1. It's worth sticking with. Oh, how sloppy is she in the splines? Not so bad. Rear pinion seal is uh, seeping a bit, and the yoke is a little sloppy in the drive shaft. I got a little bit of <whistles> wigglage going back and forth, so I don't know, rear bearing probably is on its way out. Ha! Park brake cable? We don't need that where we're going. Somebody already took care of that. I'm guessing this is a Dana transfer case of sorts. Multi-speed. Oh, it's a divorce. So look at that. You can put your 390 Ford and a C6 in here, Ford guys. So that's the beauty of these divorce transfer cases. That's what a lot of the early four-wheel drives use and then the Ford High Boys. You put like any two-wheel drive transmission and engine of your choice in between there. And all you need to do is make this cute little drive shaft and it's four-wheel drive. So you know how the output shaft is a little sloppy? So is the input shaft. How about this output shaft? Yeah, sloppy as well. Like I was saying, pretty sure this is a Dana unit as well. And I think these have a tag somewhere. Real good use of your pocket knife. I'm sure uh, A Purpose Blades likes when they see me doing this on all my videos. What do we got? What are you? I don't even know what models they're in. They're like a Dana 18 or something. Not a four wheel drive guy. Just like making messes on the floor. So it looks like I did something when Mojo comes in in the morning. Oh, is that a tag? Hey, hey. Is that a Clark? No. Maybe. As I scrape all the. Uh, Important information out there. Probably not the right thing to use as a pocket knife. It is not a Dana. It's a new process. Oh, it's Syracuse, New York. Or is it Syracuse? How do you pronounce it? Anyway, I can't really read the model. It looks like C5 or G5 or 05. Anyway, it's a it's a five model. We're calling that. It goes real well with the uh, Dana one in the back. 
It's got a four speed. Ooh, she's greasy. We're not gonna look for a model on that. Probably also a new process. Of sorts, how's the splines up here? Pretty tight, I like it. Uh, typical farmer, had a whole bunch of grass wrapped around the pinion seal. Uh, twine from a bale is also common to see here. And that usually wipes the pinion seal right out. Um, I'm guessing this one is the same situation. But not to worry, it's getting plenty of grease in the uh, differential from the engine just draining right into it because she's a greasy mess up there. It's got disc brakes like we talked about before. The, oh, they're probably supposed to do that, I would imagine. It's fine. I mean, if both sides do it, then it was meant to do it. See, it's good. We got built-in adjustable fine thread steering stops right there. It's pretty handy. These shocks look like they're leaking. Yeah, rear main seal leaking. Steering sector. Oh, you might be okay. Oh yeah, steering sector. That's it's a spicer unit. It's mounted way outside of the frame rail. Doesn't have cross steer, so I'm sure bump steer is a thing. Leaf spring front. Again, probably this is probably a Dana a two up front here. I'm guessing. Uh, this tie rod is probably supposed to be straight, but uh, it's not because somebody wrapped a chain around it to pull things out. This bumper, that is really something. Somebody spent a lot of time making it and uh, not a lot of time mounting it. There's like two 7 16 bolts mounting it. I mean, it's fine for pushing, not for pulling. Make it uh, only only one 7 16 bolt on this side. So we should probably put a bolt in there. Yeah. I mean, that's half inch material and a lot of it. And that's like four inch channel iron, top and bottom. And then some more channel here. And then all wrapped in some more pretty, pretty good size stuff. Yeah. That thing is stout. Whoever welded this, not the same guy that welded up the hitch brackets. Belt's still on it. Uh, oil has never been changed. No one chins in-laws. Haven't been to their place before. Not surprised about that. Oh yeah, that's your useless knowledge once this really noisy Cummins goes by. Uh, chins in-laws are also the people that we got. What did we call that thing? Binder Bob. Bob was real proud of those mud flaps. So proud that he painted his name on them. I was thinking about calling it lemon pie, but maybe it'll just be Bob. The yellow 64 International short bed step side two wheel drive with the uh, 153 four cylinder in it. This was sitting right next to it, but we couldn't afford this at the time because we only had like 20,000 subscribers. So now there were like 116,000. We can, we can afford four wheel drives with twice as many cylinders. So I have twice as much hope for this one. That one did run, but I think the hydraulic clutch was the uh, detrimental thing because uh, those were expensive and uh, we didn't have money then. Not that we do now. Mechanical clutch, hopefully on this one. Please be a mechanical clutch. Where are you clutch? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely mechanical looking. Okay, let's let her down and see what else we can find. Looks like the fuel pump had been replaced at one point, so that's good. No flexi hose, ginormous lower radiator hose though, that's good. We should probably check the oil because it looks like it was running out. Get her brought back down to earth. You know anything about opening hoods on internationals? I guess uh, I'm all on my own on this one. Well, here goes nothing. Oh boy, that was something. So there's this rod way down there which is probably fine when you don't have the monster bumper on there duff had to help me out a little bit he uh, found it by going on from the back side didn't show so we got going on here it looks like we got the typical cowboy battery hold down using a tarp strap some duct tape i think that was holding this screen door Material, oh, oh, a little, little bit of piano wire on this side. 
Keep the bugs out of the radiator. It's got a Delco in it. I'm sure we could code that to see when that was put in there last, but we're not gonna. Two red battery cables, cause why not? Looks like it's got a Delco alternator on it. Oh man, we're gonna need some plug wires. These uh, Bluetooth plug wire, ooh, Delcos. Looks like we're gonna need at least two. Power brakes? It is power steering, son of a biscuit. What a deal. It's got a couple of reservoirs over here. I'm guessing one's for coolant and one is for the washer fluid. Hey, there's green stuff in there. What a deal. Okay, that doesn't tighten up. It just uh, spins freely. Oh, engine displacement. Engine displacement. Looks like we got a six cylinder 258, a V8 304, a V8 345, a V8 392, or a V8 400. Looks like they punched out that that's the 348. You gotta see your IH dealer for further service information. Gives you uh, ignition timing, idle RPM, and idle mixture. So that's handy. So we know it's a 345, which is what I was guessing it would be, being a four wheel drive and all. And it's a grimy mess. Guessing there's some vacuum tubes that got chewed off as well, it looks like. I'm guessing these were supposed to be uh, connected to one another right there. Minor details. Let's take off the air cleaner and see what we got there. Look at this big old ugly thermostat housing. Nobody ever accused International of underbuilding anything, that's for sure. How much 5 old poop is in here? All of it. Oh, it's got a Fram filter. Oh. Looks like somebody just rammed it in there with a claw hammer, but... It's in there nonetheless. Yeah, that's definitely not the right diameter filter. What is this carburetor? Are you a Rochester? Or are you a Holly? I'm gonna go with Carter. Again, we could clean it up and see what it is, but we're not gonna. Because you don't care anyway. It's not frozen. So that's a plus. Let's check the dipstick, Jimmy. Think with your dipstick, Jimmy! Of course, they hide it over here. Oh, look, there's a perfect spot to reach in between the master and the booster and the brake lines to get it out. Oh, full, black as can be. Just what we were looking for. How many plug wires on this side? Uh, two are no good, and three and four are no good. So, gonna need some plug wires. What is it, Lewis? Oh, yeah. Perfect. And it's also in gear. That's how strong I am. So, let's cut the fuel line so we don't suck up any. I suppose it would have been Obama was president in 06. I don't suck any Obama fuel up. And get a battery in there. Let's see if we can find a key. What do you think, Duff? Is there going to be a key? Is there small children in the yard? Oh, yeah. There it is. Well, this is, looks like a recycled uh, ignition from, they stole from General Motors. I'm gonna check to make sure she's in neutral. Oh yeah, white headliner. This thing was pretty swanky in it today. It's got a smell in there. It's, it's not like mouse. I don't know what it is. It's kind of a sweet smell. Yeah, Duff's gonna let us know what said smell is. Hey, let me look behind the seat, see if there's anything good back there. Just kidding, international seats don't tip forward. Well, knock yourself out, I'm gonna go back up front. Oh, look at this. Tells you how to load your camper. Sweet. You uh, wanna center your weight just ahead of the uh, rear axle, which makes sense. Built in January of 74, she's an early model. What, this thing was built in Canada? That's pretty awesome. Okay, back at it. Yeah, keep up the good work. Find anything? Yeah, me either. Well, let's clean up our battery cable ends before we slide in our new Interstate DT78 battery. Looks like good old Nancy is our battery sponsor this week. Oh, Nancy, she has been around. There's good times, it's bad times together here. I would hate to imagine. Try to try to count how many cars this thing's been in. All right. He's got a starter solenoid that we can uh, hook a loser switch to, or 
I'm gonna go underneath and do it on the battery. The battery, the starter. I don't even know where the starter's at on these things. That starter solenoid is kind of blaze kitty going up. It's basically the same as a GM. Look at this. What, oh, do you hear that? She's got spark even. Woohoo! Yeah, not only can I feel spark, I can hear it. Watch this, kids. Bitch case of beer. It's got freaking spark coming off there. Ugh, don't hit me. One, two, three, go. Look at that! You hear jumping off the uh, plug wires. They're nipped. So that means somebody must have left the key on. Or, oh, never mind. When we crank the starter over, it's energizing the other side of the solenoid, which is sending power up to the coil. So the key probably isn't on. So we got spark. I uh, guess we need plug wires and fuel. Of course, we don't have a plug wire set for a 345 International round, but we do have some for a 66 Buick with a 401. Part number 29885 from uh, Pro Series. Same thing, pretty much. And uh, Buick's got straight boots. This has got straight boots. You know, I got tennis shoes. The dad joke, I know. 90 degree ends on the uh, distributor cap. We got straights on here. It's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna try to figure out which one goes where because I don't know where number one is at on this thing. I'm, I'm guessing on that side. And uh, hopefully the firing order, we can keep it all lined up. Because I can tell this one's busted off to that cylinder and this one goes to that cylinder, so. Should be uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's got champion plugs in it, so it's gonna be just fine. So I already got that boot off. We're gonna go up here. What's got a white distributor cap? How neat is that? How neat is that? You don't see that very often. We're gonna go over here to our plug wire selection and we're gonna choose one that's about the same length. Looks like this guy. Stuff that in there. Usually these plug wires are too long anyway, so. And we're not gonna use them all. Come on. Ooh, that's a good seal. And we're just gonna rinse and repeat until we get all eight good plug wires on there. Watch, I think we just gotta replace four or five. Just two on this side. Good to go. Let's go over to the driver's side. All right, which one we got over here? Oh, this one is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, because we got all four over here and it's kind of hard to tell where they're at. So we're gonna have to look up the firing order for 345 International. Ha, oh, these guys did it right. 1843, 65, 72, 1357, 2468. Just like a small block Chevy. So even I can figure this out. So I'm gonna use what I got going on over here. Here's number eight. So this should be one. Cap goes clockwise even though it's at the front of the engine. Yep, she's going clockwise. So, number one. Let's see if the shortest one in my set's gonna reach. Oh, she's gonna be close. Might have to get creative with the routing. All right, all the plug wires are on. When I was around those plug wires, I was looking at this uh, bracketry on the throttle linkage. Cable? Yeah, that's not original. Somebody's been in there. That spring is not original. Final cable bracket's not original. Maybe somebody put a 392 in this thing. Maybe it's 304. Who knows? They're all kind of uh, super similar to a layman like me. Looks like there's some vacuum ports open down there, up there. So uh, those are gonna need to be addressed as well. She's uh, getting pretty dark out. My belly's, it's big but uh, I'm hungry, I'm kinda thirsty. So let's have a celebratory sandwich once this thing fires up. So let's get some hot sauce and tickle this taco. Oh man, look at all the mouse house that came out of the exhaust just from turning the engine over and not even firing. Frickin' five hole. All right, ignition switch is on. It does turn over with the key, so that's a plus. Uh, it doesn't have a clutch switch, so heck yeah. See if we can't fill up the flow bowl so when she pops out, because we know it's gonna go. Can get her to run for a little while since we don't have a tank hooked up. Oh, it is running right out the bottom of that carburetor. Hmm. 
And I don't know what that carburetor is, so I don't have a kit laying around for it, I'm guessing. Here goes nothing. You know what would be the first start in 16 years? Duff Sparkin saying, yes, that or he's hungry. Yeah, me too, buddy. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Just like Danny Boy said, should be easy for you. Call that a win. So now we gotta hook up fuel tank. Right, Duff? Yeah. You always show up just the right time. And uh maybe we can drive this thing. The fuel line was super swelled up from having oil leaking all over it. It was like a heater hose in diameter. And the fuel that was in there stunk. You can about imagine what 16-year-old fuel smells like. So maybe we'll uh probe the tank and see what that looks like. We got some vacuum lines to fix, that's right. Okay, I'm gonna put together a list of things we're gonna do tomorrow, because I can't remember what we did an hour ago, so I'm not gonna be able to remember in 16 hours what we had going on here tonight. So yeah, God, look at these upper radiator hoses. These things are, they probably don't even make a flexi hose this girthy in diameter. How many times have I said that in this video? Like three or four or nine? Anywho, that's probably why that, that or international guys are just so self-respecting that they wouldn't lower themselves to putting flexi hoses on their radiator. All right, let's so unlock the battery cable. Somebody, why is this thing farting on me, Duff? Oil running back? I think, I don't know, I think it was Idaho Joe sent us some uh, fancy beers. We'll, we'll try one of them. So like I was saying, I'm pretty sure it was Idaho Joe who sent these. Uh, Laughing Dog Mountain Hound, Mountain Hound? Mountain Hound Huckleberry Cream Ale. I don't think we got huckleberries around here, so I don't know what they taste like, but uh, it's purple. When I, when I dig purple, it's got a dog on it, and we like dogs, so thanks, Idaho Joe. I know it was Idaho Joe, because these are made in Ponderé, Idaho. Oh, it's got a grape smell to it. Oh, grape soda. It doesn't look like grape soda. Not too shabby. <laughs> yeah, it's it's laughing dog. It's good. It's bedtime. Time to go make supper. I know, I know. Turn the stinking cyclops light off and we're gonna make a list and we're gonna do it tomorrow. So Duff says it's time to shut her down. See you guys tomorrow afternoon, evening, whenever we get back from the nine to five to working on this. Thanks, Joe. Well, Duff, should we get back to work on an international? Since we need to get fuel out of this engine, let's stick the schlong on the old fuel throat, see how the tank looks before we go straight to the boat tank. I can smell it from here, and I remember cutting that line the other day, and it stinks. But look at Charlotte over here. Man. There's some protein in that guy right there. Look at the color. All right, this is a uh, multi-person operation, so we're gonna try to do this. Going down. This thing's got like the world's longest filler neck. Still going, oh, there's the tank. Finally, spin around. It's not looking good for the home team here, kids. Oh yeah. That's a lot of rust and uh, varnish. Oh, I think that's that spider's friend. So uh, I think that pretty much answers that. Marine tank it is. We just got our vacuum hoses situated. Uh, we, all we got for vacuum on this is the power brake booster and our vacuum advance. The rest of the emissions related stuff was already kind of blocked off and what was left we, we'll just say, uh, 
Greta would approve. Also, fuel tank is in the passenger seat on the floor. Oh, it's in the seat. And there was a little rust hole in the uh, kick panel there. So you ran a hose up for that. And I think I'm gonna check the brakes now. I'm sure that fluid is gonna be super full. Yeah, right. Oh, the front reservoir is full, so we'll fill up the back one. We might actually have brakes. Lucky. Let's top off those rears. Since this has got disc brakes, the front reservoir is larger than the rear. When you got drum and drum, they're both the same size. Your worthless information of the day. As far as the vacuum lines go, uh, the PCV is not hooked up, but if we've got a vacuum leak or if it's idling high, then we'll know we'll get a vacuum leak and then we'll try to uh, figure out where that's coming from. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You just get some brake cleaner and spray it down, figure out where it idles down at. Yeah, I think we're going to give her a tickle of the old hot sauce. See if we can't get her running. Oh, we should probably put some coolant in it or at least check it. She's down our way, so we're going to top her off. I should put a half gallon wall. Wonder where that disappeared to. Oh, it's even got an AC Delco rad meter cap on it. Key is on, so here goes nothing. Gonna take a bit to get fuel up there, I feel like. We got no electric pump, so we're hoping that original mechanical one does its job. Well, it doesn't seem like we're getting fuel up here. I'm gonna crack this steel line up here. I always use a line wrench and another wrench holding this fitting because that'll spin it. That's how fuel lines twist off. And I hate twisted out fuel lines, or kinked ones. Don't be a hack. We're most definitely not getting fuel. I'm gonna go underneath, see if we're getting fuel down with the fuel pump. If we are, I feel like we got a bad fuel pump. That or this inline steel filter right here is plugged up, but I feel like we should be at least getting a trickle over there. Rerouted the fuel line coming out of the uh, fuel tank. We had a big hoop over it, over the shock, kind of over the shock mount. I don't know if there was air getting in there, but we got fuel to the fuel pump, so now we'll give her another crack and see if the fuel pump pumps. Otherwise, we're going electric, Tesla style. Fuel pump is not doing fuel pump things, so time to go electric. We got our fuel pump hooked up. There was a wire just hanging underneath the dash that conveniently is key power. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. Now we got fuel up at the carburetor, so let's uh, see if she'll run on her own now. We probably haven't been saying the slingshot engage enough times. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. It's not getting a ton of fuel up there. Oh, it's because it's leaking everywhere. Well, that's convenient. Float stuck? Not getting a lot of fuel up here for some reason. I'll show you. Yeah, nothing. Nothing at all, though. Well, I got it pumping inside the cab. I don't know if we had an air pocket in there or what. Still not getting anything out here. What the hey?
They're starting to trickle out. We got gobs of fuel in the cab. Could it be that fuel filter? All right, I'm gonna unhook it down here at the fuel filter. Let's see if we got fuel there. Of course, they got a real sweet freaking spot. Son of a biscuit. Why would you orient all those clamps that way? Oh, we got fuel there, not a ton, but there's fuel. There's a bunch of crap in that steel line. Could be, I suppose. Let's try her again. Slingshot, engage. Oh no. Well, we lost our loser switch. Son of a biscuit. Let's try her from in the cab. Somewhere between the fuel pump and the carburetor, we're just not getting enough fuel up there. So I think we're gonna have to take that steel line off and either clean it out or just bypass it all together. So always something. All right, let's see what kind of sludge comes out of here. Looks pretty good on the top end. Let's check out the bottom end with the filter. Come on now. Get up here. So this is where it hooks up to the fuel pump. This is where it was going into the filter. Let's blow it backwards. Nothing there either. The only thing left is our awesome filter here. Maybe that was doing its job. You should tap it. Whichever way it flows, you tap it the other way. But I can't see the mark on here, and I don't remember which way it come off. Story of my life, probably has something to do with these three dimples here. Nothing. Maybe it's just not coming through that fuel pump. I'm gonna go cycle the key and see if it comes out. Keep an eye right there. Here goes nothing. Man, she's pretty slow coming out of that as well. I think we're just gonna bypass all that and go uh, right to the carburetor. Okay, we bypassed everything, including the uh, base gasket on the carburetor. It's just pouring out of there. We're gonna have to pull this thing apart. Yay, because I don't even know what that thing is, so. Sweet, real excited about this. So much for it being real easy to start. Oh, Chin said his father-in-law's nickname is Hoot. So this thing's got a nickname. Hoot here. Hooter, don't ask me why they call him that, because I don't know. Guess we'll be pulling a carburetor apart. I haven't done that in a while. Yay. Yay! I think I found our issue. Shout out to whoever sent us this 400 honey ale, golden blonde ale from Titletown Brewing. Guessing that's from Green Bay. So this is a holly, you can tell, because it says holly right there. And there's our leak. I don't know if water got in here and then it froze. I mean, I, I pretty much know that's what happened. I don't have anything like that around. Uh, I don't know what they call that, a big bolt pattern. We can either put an adapter and put like a Rochester 2G, I got some of them around, or I think those Fords are the same, like a Snitch Rocket carburetor. Ooh, we could try that. Or we could just put a little of that uh, GB Weld on there, see what happens. Maybe we'll try that. Oh, you know we did it up right. That's right. GB weld, quick weld, six minute stuff, you know. It's not the five minute stuff, like, how fancy is that they make five minute epoxy? And six minute stuff. That extra 
60 seconds will get you. Figured we weren't, really, weren't out anything. So we're gonna go have a sandwich, and wait for that set up. I'm just gonna throw it back on there across our fingers, right? Ain't out nothing, are we Duff? No. Pulling all them cackle brews out of your hair. That's what you get for chasing all them critters in the trees. Oh, pull real hard. There, you got it. Well, pump's running, no puddle underneath. Let's see what happens. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. screw up a bit. That is one stiff throttle spring. She's uh, real hard to rev up. Make sure we don't have any back in leaks. Looks like everything's hooked up, plugged up. We'll double check with some brake cleaner. So we gotta fix that. I think we're gonna put it up the air, check the transfer case and the differentials, make sure they got fluid in them. We don't wanna smoke those. Do we go? Runs good. Ready to go for a ride? Oh yeah.
What is burning down there? Oil from the valve cover gaskets leaking? Oh yeah. Glorious. She needs a heavy pressure washing. Seems like it runs all right, but I think it needs a little playing with the timing or it's got a miss or something. She's uh, shaking a little bit under there. And not in the good camshaft way. Sorry, I got something in my eye. So, yeah, let's uh, put her in the air, check some fluids. All right, head her up in the air, check both diffs, transfer case, transmission. The four gear is the only thing that needs some 80-90, so we put, put a cord in that. We got a tube in the left rear tire. Yeah, that's right. I left the white letter out even. Look at this. We got two headlights. Is that marker light supposed to light up? Probably not. Just reflectors, I'm guessing. Uh, no taillights, so we ain't going for a ride tonight. How about the high beams? Yeah, for you millennials, there's a button on the floor. Right there. Come on, big money, no whammy. Oh yeah, high beams even. Sweet. You can't have everything, so. All right, we're shutting her uh, down for the night. Should be able to go for a test drive tomorrow, though. I don't know what else we gotta check. All right, punch it out, see you then. Blow it up. You gotta go over to your side, though. You can't drive. Go over there. Come on now. Got a nice armrest. Oh, this seat is, she is plush. What do you think, Duff? That's a good seat right there. All right, new day. Same old International. I feel like I'm driving a Peterbilt. Like, kind of sit low in this seat. I don't know if it's because it's blowed out or that's how you drive Internationals, like you're a Peterbilt driver. Anywho, let's get this dog and bearded man show on the road, huh, Duff? A couple, couple pumps for good luck. A couple more pumps for good luck. needs a uh, carb rebuild. Let's be honest, needs a whole different carb and a muffler. Hopefully it doesn't need a clutch. Oh, there we go. Better make sure we're in two-wheel drive. We don't want to burn up the diff or the transfer case because uh, we got different sized tires.
really hazy. It looks like we're doing about 35. It's funny, the glass over the temp, oil pressure, alternator, and fuel are all really good, but it's super foggy. Over the speedo. We got a little deeper than the sandwiches last night. I feel like a perspiring sandwich out in the pores. I had to go the uh, electrolyte route this morning. Don't worry. Doing fine. We're conditioned. You know, this thing doesn't drive half bad. Put a muffler in it, carb kit. This seat is good. This is. I don't know if it's the way that it's blown out or just how luxurious these were from the uh, factory, but this seat is plush. All kinds of headroom, you know, you can chop the top on this thing. Oh, it's so you can wear your big silly cowboy hat. That's what it is. You ever seen them cowboy hat racks that go up top there? It's like a spring and a big wire that's bent around and grabs your hat. Speaking of cowboys, where's the horses at though? There they are. I don't even own a cowboy hat. We should probably get one of those. Don't send me a cowboy hat either. We'll get our own. It's, we do have the straw hat. That's pretty cool. Get up and go the old three, four, five has. Not a lot. Because it's a great truck engine. You do kind of gotta herd it down the road. Not as bad as the old 60 Chevy flat top we did with 300,000 miles on it. You got meanders a bit. We've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Real rawhide leather there. Oh, he's got his number five and number one. No, number five. Duff. We're not chasing cows. Duff, that cow would kick your butt. What are you doing, you goon? Oh, no. Oh, no. He's definitely chasing that cow down the road. I oh, hope this thing starts again. Hopefully it's got a reverse, too. Where's the key? Not a cow dog. He did, however, chase that cow into the next township. You go. Oh, the, uh, the door handle is definitely broken on the inside here. On a positive note, it started to idle again. You're lucky that big old bull didn't come after you. Has he got goats, too? Silly guy, that pookie. Where'd you chase that cow to? Not a speed demon in reverse. The temp gauge is not working, or this thing runs cool as a cucumber. I'm guessing it's not that. Where did you chase that cow? Did he find his way back in the fence? Must have. You're a good cow dog. 
flatbed square body conversion already. We don't we don't need this one. So if you need this thing, hit us up, morskirepair at gmail.com. There'll be a price and availability down in the description. Runs great. Why the chugging? Got to get her up in the old power band. It's like a two-stroke YZ125. Rat, rat. Yeah, like I say, it runs good. You would think you need to own a 1974 International Model 100. Hit us up. You could probably own this thing. Is this is this Captain Pookie himself? Hey. Oh crap. Number five was out, but uh, Duff heard him back in. Good, good. Yeah, All right, I better go. All right, see you later. Thanks for the Sounds like a grain truck. It's because it is. Oh, I think she spins it off. Wow. Oh, he says we got a tire leak here. So we got to get back. Dang it, I just put a tube in that thing. I think we got a bad batch of tubes. It's a three footer. You got one on the clutch, one on the gas, one on the brakes. Oh, it's just Bob. He'll get out of our way. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. You're not even hanging your head off the window. Is that how fast this thing goes? Can you handle all that speed? Hot, nasty speed? Hell in the world. Alright, let's get home. Get a tire on this thing. One quick donut. Or three or nine. We're gonna need a tube sponsor if we keep this up. Alright, we're gonna do donuts to the left, so that way our flat tires on the inside, and it's probably gonna be like monster truck, it's just gonna like pull up in the air. Alright, ready for this stuff? Ready? Brace yourself! Let's put lower ahead. What do you think, Duff? Keeping it? Yeah, probably not. On to the next one. All right, let's go. I knew you didn't like it that much. Where is it missing? You just gotta hold it just right. It'll be fine. Be fine, little tube. No steam? This thing's good. I did even put like a gallon of coolant in it. Well, there you have it. We got a 1974 International 100 fur by fur back on the road for the first time in 16 years. Carburetor froze up, cracked, so we JB welded that up real good. Placed a couple of spark plug wires that the mice had chewed it off and did the same with some vacuum hoses that the mice had uh, indulged on. Yeah, other than that, put a couple tires on it. We gotta do uh, another one. I put a tube in that one. So let's just say we put four tubes in them. Pretty easy. She needs some love, but hey, we saved another one. This one's probably gonna go to somebody else. As you can see, we got uh, quite the yard of our own stuff already. So comment down below with your favorite dad joke, cause I 
I dig a good dad joke. Check the link down below. Get yourself some, some Mortsky merch so that we can keep the shop, keep our sandwich supply stocked up. Because it's, uh, it's dwindling down, especially after them long Saturday nights that we just had. Alright, we got to get on to the next one so we can uh, keep up this great content for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Check out the other videos. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you're having fun. I feel like that push bumper would be way too much fun if we had it around the yard. And, uh, it's probably the Alright, let's go do something. I think that's something that's fixing a tiger.